Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us on the desk at Market Site, we have Michael Normile, U.S. Economist at NASDAQ, as well as Max Cabasso and Maddie Ragner, Directors on NASDAQ's Market Intelligence Desk. And we have Fausto Puglisi back with us, President at Cyber Trading U. We're going to take a look at the performance of earnings seasons, large versus small cap. We're also going to talk a little bit of Bitcoin, which really has been the story of the day. It's great to have you guys back with us. Welcome to Trade Talks, as always. Michael, let's kick it off with you. We're somewhat near the end of earnings season. Give us a recap of what led the way, what isn't leading the way, and how this is kind of translating into what we're seeing with large and small. Yeah, it turned out you know better than expected. I, I think you can say for large caps, uh, back in mid-January, early on in earnings season, we were looking at maybe negative 2% year-over-year earnings growth projected at the time. Here we are now, it's almost 4% positive growth year-over-year. And you know that's with uh, about three quarters of stocks beating their earnings estimates, which is pretty you know standard beat rate more or less for large caps uh, S and P 500 firms. And so we've had about 95% of the S and P 500 having reported at this point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's been a lot of the same themes that we saw the last few quarters, where consumer-led stocks have been really doing the the bulk of the gains if that's uh, we're talking communication services information technology consumer discretionary those have uh, still been areas of strength but uh, if you turn to mid-cap stocks we've seen uh, that their earnings recession come to an end this quarter looking at almost two percent uh, year-over-year earnings growth uh, this quarter but a bit more mixed with about half the sectors just over half the sectors seeing negative earnings growth and then for small caps, their earnings recession continues. It's about six quarters now and projected to continue beyond that uh, with much, much weaker, I think about negative 20% year over year earnings growth uh, for Q4. So Maddie, what's going on with the small caps here? This is, this is a lane that you're in. Is it because we're still in a higher interest rate environment? Is mm-hmm. it because the fundamentals just aren't good? Yeah, so small caps did see a nice four-day run, but unfortunately they're the laggards again today. There's been kind of this back and forth with them. Uh, I think they're definitely just looking for direction, more clarity on when rate cuts will happen, as well as inflation prints. Last month we saw a little bit stickier of inflation, so just looking to see uh, what's next. Um, The Russell 2000 as well as the S&P 600 are still about flat year to date. They both were up a very impressive amount. S&P 600 was up about 14% last year. Russell was up about 15% last year. Uh, since the end of 2021, they're both down about 8%. So a bit of laggards. Um, as Michael mentioned, 7 out of the 11 sectors in the S&P 600 are seeing a negative earnings uh, recession this quarter. So still have a lot of catching up to do. And, and what's interesting, Fausto, we continue to hit all-time highs, right? But we haven't gotten those interest rate cuts. The expectations were for six in the at end of last year. We might get three, so I, I think it, it's good that we're seeing you know positive performance in, in most sectors, most stocks, and we haven't gotten that interest rate cut. You know, Jill, I I I, I have some hope. <laughs> I have some yeah. hope that you know if they do lower them, these small caps took a really big hit with earnings. I mean, everybody looks at the fabulous seven; they did unbelievable. Amazon, Facebook, all of them, Nvidia, but uh, small caps took a very very big hit, and you know with their these variable rates that are really hurting them. So if they could really, if they could. Uh, if they can get those interest rates, I think they're going to come back. But there's going to be some really good buying opportunities. Yeah. You know, some people like some of these other stocks are getting very expensive, and um, people are looking for deals now. So there's going to be some good opportunities, and some of them actually do make some comebacks too. Uh, it's, or certainly, some of them can. I mean, we've seen what's happened in the healthcare biotech space over the past week as well. I mean, that's certainly uh, you know, in addition to the news that's out there, there certainly is a valuation story behind it. But again, when it comes to small caps, even if rates are cut, you still need to have good underlying fundamentals, and I think some small cap companies do struggle with that. I mean, cost of capital has been high for the past two to three years, and then, you know, balance sheets do matter in this environment. Investors certainly are more discerning. They, they, oh, they are, but, but, when it, but when it comes to uh, if they survive this long, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and to still keep their earnings, and, and some of them, what they're also been noticing a lot, too, is some of them doing a lot of reverse stock splits. So trying to keep their values up higher. So that's one thing you've got to be a little concerned about, that, if they, if they can, because some of them made so many, uh, have so many outstanding shares out there, that if they could just limit it, limit it, limit that, um, and keep their value up higher, I think they'll, I think they'll survive. Yeah, they could do them well. Michael, it's interesting how sometimes financial engineering, with whether it's stock puts, splits or buying back stock, really can impact investor sentiment and, and the valuation of some of these companies. Yeah, and I think uh, to your point, you know, it can be helpful to get ahead of that before you get your stock price too low. That 
doing a kind of a preemptive reverse split can be helpful in that sense before it gets kind of to a territory where it's a little too bit cheap. more concerning, right? Yeah. Right. Don't get too low. Yeah, exactly. And and you know, I know I was talking about the earnings recession earlier in small cap stocks, but if analysts are to be believed, there is projections for earnings to pick up in the second half of this year, so that could be you know benefit for those small and mid caps later on. And on, on top of that, I saw a few headlines, at least in the small healthcare space, private placements are up. So in the shorter term, companies are looking to raise capital shorter term with the hope that cuts will come uh, in the later half of the year. Yeah. It could be as, as negative as it's been, I also think part of it is, is, is healthy to kind of get this washout. We, we talked about in 21, 22, we had, you know, a thousand IPOs in that two year period where it was double, triple, you know, in 21, I think we were at 350. Which kind of double our average. 20, or 20 was double. 21, we had 750. There was a ton of new companies coming out of there. People that didn't necessarily have great business models, they're just out there. But because there's no cost of capital, you could just raise it basically whatever you needed, whatever you wanted. You had your run rate for a few years. Now it's like, okay, do you really have a business? Is this sustainable? And some of those are going to get washed out. You know, some of that probably shouldn't be public, but you're starting to kind of clean up a bit. Again, it's. I've been looking at kind of the, the Russell trade for, for a while now. You keep hearing talks about, you know, there are small cap value names out there that are good businesses, you know, buying opportunities that hasn't come to fruition yet. All right, the momentum hasn't been there. They really underperformed. So I, it, I think it's still going to take something bigger to get more of those tailwinds behind them. And again, rate cuts, we've been talking about it for, for a couple of months here. That we didn't think six was on the table. Right. You know, the Fed was saying four. Potentially four. Market was saying six, seven. We were kind of saying, I, I don't believe that. I think the market's going to come back. And I think once that clarity is out there, now it's 50 50 in June. But again, it's still 50 50 when you know, cuts are going to start to happen. Once that gets out of the way, I think the fundamental story potentially gets a bit clearer for companies, but there still is that uncertainty. And then we have the you know, political environment coming up in November. So there's still going to be some headwinds there. So I think once that clears out, you, know, you, you might have a bit more of a tailwind. But uh, you know, I just Which is interesting, too, because, of course, our fiscal policy situation is, is messy it's going into an election year as well. And, then, you know, we're also talking about a government shutdown again, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing. I mean, the, the market's always going to climb a wall of worry. It's always going to be a story. It's not like this is you know, specific to 2024. It's an anomaly. There's always going to be something um, out there. I, I would say that the fact that earnings season was decent and companies delivered was a good thing because we certainly had six rate cuts aggressively priced in. And if earnings were not as good as they were, that could have been really ugly. But let's get into some charts here, Max. Let's pull up Bitcoin. This was super interesting. As I came in the studio at 1245, it's over 64,000. <laughs> Got done with my last hit. It's at 59,000. I think back. we're 60-ish somewhere now. Yeah, uh, 61 now, essentially. We're back. Bitcoin's back. This is what we, this is what we all live for, Bitcoin. Uh, you know, obviously, ETFs have seen massive inflows. Uh, some of them are hitting, again, new records today. Looking to overtake some of the gold ETFs in terms of assets, it's it's coming quickly. Um, you know, again, feels like we're getting overbought. We've had these crazy moves higher, but when you kind of look back historically, we're really not even close to kind of what the potential is if we're going back and we see a similar move. You, know, you look at 2020, we were trading, you know, basically 2018, 19, 20, you know, around 10,000 sat there, and then you know, 6x in short order, we kind of came back down to 20,000. Again, 6x, 5x, we're at like a 3x from, from the lows here. So, and now, again, we have additional tailwinds behind it. Um, you know, companies now can start using Bitcoin on their balance sheets as a, as a, as a reserve currency. And I've spoken to a company, a few you know, in the space that are, are doing that, um, that will benefit from it. So we'll see if you get a tailwind from that as well. So yeah, well, it's, uh, it's back. Well, volatility is back in it. It is back in it. What about volatility in the market overall? What are you seeing in the VIX? It still seems to be... It's muted. <laughs> muted, for sure. You know, this is going back to 2019, this chart, which were the lows, uh, you know, just under 12. We've kind of, we saw that small spike, uh, you know, with inflation and Fed basically coming out. Okay, we're not going to be, you know, cutting rates. We're not going to be doing six like everybody thought. We saw that, uh, I don't even know if you can call it a spike because we still didn't even break 20. Um, but now we're back at, you know, 1375, you know, Put call skew in, in options. Protection is still, you know, relatively cheap. No one's really putting it on. There seem to be a lot of questions, but again, a lot of this gets tied into the large caps, which have been really outperforming. So there's not as much fear there. There's not as many question marks with the large caps, and even the single names. You know, the Mag Seven, they performed where that was kind of the worry. 
you know, I thought you'd potentially see a, a spike in the VIX if, if those earnings weren't good and those some mega caps that really have outperformed, they started to turn, you start to see some question marks, but they all performed, right? They hit it out of the park. So now it's kind of back to, uh, we're sitting here waiting. Usually something comes up, you, VIX goes low, 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 everybody starts selling vol, selling vol, selling vol, and then some, some shock comes in and it's like, oh, wait a second, we shouldn't have been you know, selling vol this whole time, but right now it's muted, it's been a tight range. We're sitting here basically below 15 for you know, the last few months. We had a couple of spikes, but otherwise it's been really muted. Well, you know how it is with the VIX, the lower the VIX, the uh, move to the upside can certainly feel more yeah, shocking than the other sure. way around. And finally, quick read on the SPX. Starting to consolidate a little bit. We had that run, you know, obviously the end of last year. Large caps, S&P 500 had that run. They really kept going. We got to new all-time highs, and now we're starting to consolidate again. You know, some of the froth potentially coming out. Some people starting to take profits. Yeah, we're kind of sitting tight here. Um, and one of the things that, you know, valuation metrics here, we're getting a bit more expensive. We're talking about it's getting, you know, more expensive. It's, it's pricier to buy some of these names, but again, they're performing. You can see we're kind of back at, at 21 levels here with PE, even price of sales, price of book. We're at elevated levels. Um, but again, they're performing, so people are willing to pay up, you know, for those names that consistently, you know, continue to perform and perform and perform. They have these drivers behind them. You know, obviously AI is getting is, is big, you know, hype cycle again, and what has that's coming to, to fruition. So, again, it's, Getting more expensive, uh, but investors seem to be okay with it. So again, a little consolidation here. We'll see what happens now. It's, you know, earnings are out of the way. Probably go back to kind of more macro-focused information, but doesn't seem like there's a ton of headwinds for them. All right, my turn for the charts. But to your point exactly, you know, we are going to get into this this earnings vacuum where it's going to be you know hyper-focused again on what's happening with the Fed, what's happening with interest rates. But let's talk about how we're trading these things, Fausto. NVIDIA, I mean, how much higher can it go? So when you're thinking about what levels you want to get in or out, let, let's take a look at some of the charts here. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, in getting back, if I may, just regarding about your Bitcoin, you know, regarding what we're talking about, what we're going to be talk mentioning about the book viewer is that I've noticed also on, uh, on different, uh, seeing a lot of people are shorting Bitcoin now. And that's what's causing a big, big flux in it. And so if you don't see that, that's why you got this big, big pop. So by, by the stock hovering there for a while, that's why we're seeing a big pop that I've noticed. But getting back to, yeah, NVIDIA, we, last time we were here, we saw some huge iceberg orders uh, on NVIDIA, hovering around 500 last time we were here. I mean, obviously being one of the part of the Fabio 7, but what's nice about uh, NVIDIA, it finally broke through that major, major resistance levels, but it wasn't, you know, people look at it as a resistance level, it's more of seeing big block orders out there. And I think last time we were here, we had like over two, almost a quarter million shares out there on that. Um, but now what happened, once it broke through that major resistance, we had a big pop of almost $300 on that stock. I mean, the stock's up almost, what, 600% since the beginning of the year? It's been, I mean, that's really been the number one stock for mm -hmm. AI stocks. It's just been doing great. Now, the question people are asking is like, okay, is it over? Is, is the party done? I mean, is it going to continue to go higher? Well, like anything else on the book viewer, I mean, it's nice about it is that you get to see those orders, not only seeing those orders at 800, but look at all the different orders, not just as price. You got 1,500 people, 1,500 orders out there at like 800, another 450 orders at 795. I think the video is down to like, was hovering, it did come down, back down about 175. It's not a huge drop from where it is, but what's nice about it is that if it's, is it starting to go down? Well, it's starting to channel a little bit here. If it continues to channel, and I keep seeing refreshing going on on the book viewer, um, this could be the top for a little while, but we'll, we'll need to see how things go out in the next couple of days if it continues. Yeah, and we can see that right there, right? On the iceberg order. Yeah, huge iceberg order, just hovering there around 800, and now you got a new iceberg order. It's been holding there, but what I like about this 175 price is that there's a, there's a order out there on book viewer. It keeps refreshing his order, keeps updating it. More orders keep going out there. You see the time in sales. You see that person getting executed, and uh, it's holding there pretty strong. So, we got if if we hold it here for the next next day or so, depending on if you're a day trader or more of a swing trader, um, 800 is the cap. But the seven, 175 is a really really big uh, support. Well, let's talk about Rivian here, right? Looking for this bounce. Well, Rivian got destroyed because of the earnings. I mean, that stock literally came down. Um, uh, came down almost like from 18 and 19 down to like $10. What was beautiful about this example here is that you had literally a 500,000 share buyer at $10. He was there for not one day, but several days. I would say, well, probably like three, four days. And what's nice about what you could see is that they pulled their order the night before. 
Then they came back when the market opened up at 930, and then they put it back there again. So they would not drop, they would not let go at $10. Now, obviously, 10 being a, you know, a mental number for people, but it, for us as traders, there was over half a million shares. Stock hit there within the same day. Stock rate about 10%, went shot up all the way up to about 11. And then, like everyone always asks, is, okay, where do I get out? And the big thing is, you had some big sellers starting to show up there, 150,000 share orders at 11, and that's where you started getting the stock back off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and you can see that in the chart there for sure. All right, last one, Amazon. Of course, everyone wants to know how to trade this one. <laughs> I love Amazon. I've been Amazon for, for, for a long time, but, and it was great to hear when it broke earnings. And, 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 but now the next thing is, how much higher is it going to go? So Amazon's obviously break, breaking all-time highs. Um, but as a trader, you're always thinking about taking profits. Remember, you did not make a single penny until you sell it. So Amazon, all of a sudden you're coming up to a big order out there, uh, about 200,000 shares hovering there with 63 orders at 175. Now, once again, a mental number, 175 is a number, never got to 175. One little trick that we always learn as traders, always sell right below that whole number. <laughs> Don't ever sell a, a solid number like that. And by seeing that on the book viewer, you'll notice it hit it. And then obviously over the course of the day, went from 175 right down 169. All right. Appreciate the insight as always. Now we know how to read charts. Now we know how to trade these stocks. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks and thanks for joining me from Market Site. I'm Joe Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.